better? Better? How am I sounding? How you sounding? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Ready? Are we going to sing or anything? Yeah, we can sing. Uh-huh. Definitely. <clears throat> all right. All right, all right. We got episode 33 of Feeny Talks with Friends. This is all thanks to my buddy Dave at Direct Line Media. Uh, I forgot to shout you out last episode. Sorry, Dave. But Dave has been doing 33 episodes with us. Please check it out on, on all your uh, podcast formats. You, we're on Google. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple. We're also on YouTube so we can see our pretty faces. 32 was phenomenal. Chris Clark is the freckled financial phenom. Chris Clark. So check out episode 32. We had 32 likes. He's the most liked podcast. The most thumbs up. You got to have get people to like it and thumbs okay. thumbs it up. Most liked until today. Exactly. Yes, thank yes you. Mark. <laughs> we talked about being a dad of three girls. We talked about finances. We talked about Wu Tang Clan. You know Wu Tang Clan? What's your favorite uh, Wu Tang song, Mark? Uh, <laughs> uh, let's get on another subject. Now. <laughs> but it's just really cool that episode 22 we had 18 subscribers. Episode 32, we're on 61 subscribers. So we're moving up on the likes, we're moving up on the subscribers. And again, today is going to push us over the top. Absolutely. I'm here with a great person. So Friends of Feeney, Feeney Talks with Friends. Let me start. Feeney Talks with Friends is a nonprofit. We help children and families that need assistance after heartbreak or tragedy. Feeney Talks with Friends is a podcast, and we talk with wonderful people in the community that are doing great things. How you doing? You know him? Oh, no. <laughs> Come on in. It's, a, it's actually closed today. Closed on Mondays. We got a guest. If you pay in cash, we, I can sneak you a beer. It's a joke, actually. I don't work here. We're just, they let us use the space. What's your name? I'm Brian. Brian. Brian's on the podcast. This is Feeney Talks with Friends. What's your name? All right, it's a podcast. But Brian's here. So Cody and Will, Brian's here. They open on Wednesday. So come back on Wednesday. Wonderful place. Coffee's phenomenal. The beer's phenomenal. Yeah. They let us film podcasts here. Well, all right, Brian. Check out, yes. check out a nonprofit called Friends of Feeney. All right? Friends of Feeney. Okay. Do me a favor. Check, check that out. Sure. All right. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Take see care. You never know. This is great. That's yeah. a first. Oh, yeah. That well, was let's awesome. Hope, let's hope there's a few more firsts. Right? Keep them coming. This year. Keep them like, coming. Yeah. I should have invited them on. Yeah, but I think you should be selling beer here. We can get he reached beer, in his you know. pocket with the cash. Too. I know, he was set to do it, but Man. okay. <laughs> but again, wonderful people that are doing great things in the community. And Mark, you have been in the West Hartford community for how long now? Uh, back in this community for 40 years. Just 40 four years. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark. Yeah. All right, so let's start. This is episode 33. Mark from Mark's Christmas Trees. Like a West Hartford legend. I'm like honored to be speaking with you right now, Mark. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. And it's honored to learn about Friends of Feeney, too. Thanks. I've been hearing about it, but to meet the other legend, if you will, is a real treat for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, let's get right into it. Mark's Christmas Trees. What inspired you to start Mark's Christmas Trees? Uh, well, back 1979. Gotcha. Uh, 43 years ago, Marnie and I, my wife is from Nova Scotia, and we were living up there. And uh, I'm from Hartford originally, but I was living up there. And a friend of ours who was also from this area, from Springfield, Mass., and also married a Canadian woman from Nova Scotia, uh, suggested to me that Connecticut did not have a lot of Christmas trees being grown at that time down here, so that perhaps I should take a load from Nova Scotia, which had a lot, a lot of Christmas trees grown then and grown now down to Connecticut and sell them. So what I did was uh, called my father who lived in West Hartford at the time and asked him if he could possibly find a spot for me to sell them. And in the interim, thinking that I could find a spot, I went and uh, purchased a truckload of Christmas trees from the area where they sell them from primarily in Nova Scotia and uh, took the, my father found a spot here, not far from here, on New Britain Avenue by, at the underpass. Yep. Uh, and I took a truckload of trees down here uh, and came down, stayed with uh, my parents at the, at the time, this is 43 years ago, and sold a load of Christmas trees. Had a lot of fun, um, didn't know the first thing about it. Um, I got some excellent help from a 
a friend of my family's who a fellow who was in his early 60s who had just retired from Pratt and Whitney and he became a real legend because he he helped me out a lot and, nice uh, what's his name his name is John Brash he's long gone he died about 10 years ago at the age of 91 but he was kind of like a second father to me um, he was just retired from Pratt and I remember being at the tree lot uh, sitting on a pallet uh, thinking how am I going to put up lights and my father had called John and I think he had kind of said something to the effect of John Mark doesn't have a clue what he's doing now <laughs> down there <laughs> and could you stop by and John said yeah sure I'd be glad to so he pulled in a lot and he said and I never forgets 43 years ago he said what, what are you doing I said well John I'm trying to figure out how to set up some lights and he kind of shook his head like this and he said um do you think you'll have that figured out by Easter time? <laughs> and he said, get in the car. And I said, okay. And I got in the car and we just went around the corner to New Park Avenue and uh, talked to the guy there who got lights and he came back and helped me set up. And he took a real interest in the lot and he, it was such a great retirement hobby for him. Wow. My wife Marnie came down. We were still living in Nova Scotia at the time and my wife Marnie came down and, and she kind of ran the lot for a few years, three to five years, I would say, and while well, I could work at my other stuff. And uh, then after that, John started working. He was probably in his mid to late 60s at the time. And absolutely, he was so much fun. He was a great guy. He was really a born salesman, although that's not what he did. He was an accountant for Pratt, but he, uh, Customers loved him. They would come in. They wouldn't want to deal with anybody else that was there, including me, if they could talk to John. And he took it on himself. To, he was, a, as I said, he was a kind of a born salesman. And people that come in to get a Christmas tree, they, they come in for a tree. They don't really need to be sold on anything. Yeah. But John just felt like he had to sell on that, uh, them on that. So, yeah, do you want a tree? Oh, maybe you need a stand. Maybe you need this. Maybe you need... And people absolutely loved him. I'll never forget one day when John was down there and some fella came in and he didn't find a tree and he started to leave. And John didn't want anybody to leave without a Christmas tree. So he went up and he kind of grabbed the guy by the shoulders and turned him around. And I was there and I was looking like I thought this is not a good thing. Anyway, John said something to him and the guy started laughing and John put his arm around and brought him back to the lot. And he found a tree. He walked wow. away with a tree. And John was... Uh, That's impressive. Was, yeah, yeah. So we had a lot of fun down there, too. So the lot is 1030 New Britain Ave? 1030 New Britain Ave. 1030 New Britain yeah, Ave. Yeah. West Hartford, Connecticut. Right been there for 40 years. 40, yeah, 43 years. When I, when my father actually found that lot, um, the building used to be the old Lincoln Dairy for many years. Local people, perhaps days gone by, know that. And... Uh, it had just been sold, and my father just walked in one day, met the new owner of the lot, and asked if I could sell trees. And the guy said, "Yeah, I guess so." And so it's a, it the place is a tiny patch of grass, as you yeah. know, and it just really comes alive during the month of uh, December. It's kind of incredible. No, I love it. Yeah, you string yeah. the lights. Is that yeah. the lights that you did not know how to set up that are strong? Those. Eric are the exact same lights from 43 years ago, are which amazes me how the they... The same lights? Yeah, the same lights. I, I, how do they wow. work that well? Uh, I guess John, who helped me out, knew what he was doing. He strung the lights. And do you have and, them labeled and where this stand should go on the yard so they always like are you know, in the same place? Or? They've been set up the same way for 43 years. <laughs> and now Russ, Russ Trent, who is the new owner and doing an excellent job, by the way, he knows where to set them up to. Yeah. So, yeah, set up the same way and just... It, it comes alive during the month of December. We had this year, and it's on our Facebook page. I think it's Mark's Christmas Trees on Facebook that uh, one of the people that works, their daughter, uh, did a, uh, a video. Uh, some drone video. Drone video, yeah. yeah it was so cool. Drone yeah, video. it was so great. Uh, first of all, Russ came up to visit in Nova Scotia with his wife and family a few years ago and took a drone video of where we actually get the trees. And it was very cool to see that, and that's been on our website. But then um, this customer walked in, and he had a drone. And I think he maybe knew somebody there, but he said, do you want me to take a drone video? So he did that. So uh, Riley, Chris's daughter, 
put together a beautiful video yeah. that I guess you saw. It's, it's out really now. Cool. It's on Facebook, Instagram too. You have Facebook, oh, Instagram right? page, both Mark's Christmas trees. Yeah. You should definitely check it out. There's drone footage of Nova Scotia, of yeah. the trees, and then there's drone footage of the lot. Yeah. When yeah. you guys are working. And, and then the third part was the, some of the finished products because a lot of times people send us pictures of their decorated trees. And nice. so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fun thing. And know? then you brought up Russ, Russ Trent, and yep. I want to thank Russ. Uh, he is a good friend. That's our motto, be a good friend. He has sponsored multiple families and given Friends of Feeney maybe over 25 trees in the past three years yeah. to give to um, – impacted families that may not be able to afford the trees nice. so to, and then i get the pictures too so when you see that decorative tree right and you see the kids joy and knowing that russ and mark thank you Mar mark and everyone down there all the friends down at mark's christmas trees to donate and give to a family in need is it's special yeah. it means a lot so thank you russ he's a wonderful person he also donated 250 bucks so nice. thank you for the donation Russ got it right here. The Nova Connect. See, Nova. now it makes sense. Yeah. No, okay. Nova, Nova Scotia, Scotia Connecticut, and Connecticut extension connection, yeah. or connect. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. So that means a lot. And um, Friends of Feeney also marched in Park Road Parade and multiple parades. Russ supplied his truck and trailer, oh, and we nice. turned it into a float. Great. And yeah. uh, we won best float. So thank oh, yeah. you, Russ, for that. Terrific. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Russ, yeah, Russ is a wonderful person. Yes, he is. Nice He's family. like, does the family yeah. need stands? He'll donate a stand. Does yeah. the family six foot, five foot? And yeah. just really, uh, again, the community uh, meeting with Dave volunteers to do the direct line media. We had a wonderful toy drive here last night at Weeha Roasting and Brewing. If we didn't know, and I didn't mention it, we are in Weeha Roasting and Brewing on uh, 141 Shield Street, right by the post office. Come check it out. We had a wonderful tree lighting. Mark's trees, we did a tree lighting outside 15 foot tree. Yep. So when you're driving by Shield Street, come check out this amazing tree, which was um, from Mark's trees, 15 foot. Uh, but yeah, you could see, we're gonna hopefully scan the boxes and the setup. Yeah, so sure. I made some new friends. We made connections. I met with a woman she works for the Rotary Club in West uh, Weathersfield. We're gonna. She's talking oh, about nice. giving scholarships to help Is friends of Feeney. Right? Met Good. another person. Just people are just very generous and thoughtful, giving toys. We have two huge boxes filled up, and again, all thanks to our friends Will and Cody down at uh, Weehaw Roasting and Brewing. Got the shirt. <laughs> and speaking of shirts, we got to talk about your outfit. <laughs> Look at the camera. Yeah. Let's see You're that. You're lucky Look at I that. didn't go too silly. Well, it. Christmas. I've had these Christmas suspenders, Christmas tree suspenders for a number of years. And this is one of several Christmas tree ties that I have. And I do have quite a collection of very, very strange hats as well. But I yeah. decided maybe I shouldn't get quite that strange. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, we got another pop in. But speaking Hi. of which, this is Taylor. She works at Sock Stars. Oh, great We place. had another wonderful toy drive on Sock Stars on Saturday. We filled nine bags of toys. Wow. It was just it rained and the weather was miserable. It was terrible. But the turnout was phenomenal. My daughter, Neela, made hot cocoa. My other daughter had coloring pages and a raffle. And again, the generosity through the community and people showing up. One family brought 50 toys alone, just this one family. Isn't that something? And then we Great. had a raffle, and yeah. Taylor won the gift card to uh, Weeha Roasting and Brewing. Okay, nice. And I didn't have it on me, and we couldn't meet yesterday, so she came down today. Nice. Taylor. Any words about Friends of Feeney? Uh, it's a great, great organization. Hold on, get, get that in the mic, get that in the mic, come on. Come on, come on, <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta hear that. Uh, it's a great organization that we get to work with. Sock Stars was very, very happy to be working with Friends of Feeney. Um, you know, the toys came out amazing. Even last year when we did it, the first one, great business for both ends. Um, we raised so much money on Saturday um, for the store and you know, it was great to see both ends of it. Can you tell us a little bit about Hark and Sock Stars and who you hire and stuff? So, Sock Stars is an organization that works with a company called Hark, and Hark works with people with intellectual disabilities, and 100% of our profit gets to go to them as well as we employ them. So, um, they get to work in the store, they get to make some of the socks. We do some hippy dippy socks that are tie dye socks that are really cool. Um, and it's a great opportunity for the folks to be a part of a social enterprise, which is what we are, 
and Harkin is an amazing organization that gets to support these folks and you know there's day programs and um, they get to go to other businesses like law firms and both businesses are just it's amazing to be a part of it so I've been a part of it for about two years now and a little over two years and I'm so happy to be a part of it and then get to meet Eric and be a part of all around it. <laughs> no, I was honored to collaborate with Sock Stars. They do tremendous work for, again, the community and people with individual needs. And just um, two years in a row, two toy drives in a row rained. It was just like, <laughs> luckily this year we were all able to go into the store. Is it a pop-up store or artisan shop? What do you guys so call it? So last year we um, got the place and it, we made it a holiday shop, so our holiday socks, that kind of stuff. We had another um, business called Abel Made in there. Um, and then this year, this March, we got to open an artisan studio. So our artisan studio, um, I design some cards. We have some other um, people who get to work with us that we create uh, ornaments and wreaths and stuff like that. And all the people with intellectual disabilities get to make them. So there, we have about six to eight during the week that get to be there and make these amazing things like greeting cards and ornaments and we're making candles and that's where they do the hippy dippy socks. Um, so they get to have an opportunity to like a chance to see how business, how to run a business, how to, how to create these things. Mm -hmm. And they also every quarter get a commission on what they make. So everything we sell, they get a part of it. So it's a little studio that, a little art studio that they get to where's, be a part of. Where's that? Tim? It's right next to Sockstar. So it's oh, right literally next right next door. Yeah. Yeah, Sockstar is, is a permanent Yes, we, yes, 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 and we're hoping their, this artisan studio, yes, yeah. in March will be a year that the artisan studio yep. has been there, oh, so hopefully okay. this is permanent as well. Yeah, 18 LaSalle Road. I yes. highly encourage everyone to get out there, funky socks, Swedish fist socks, Oreo socks, Friends of Feeny socks. Yes. yes. Friends yeah. of Feeny yeah. socks. We had a sock design contest, a, a high school student won the design, and then a third grader won the tag. Um, now, I can't thank Sock Stars enough. It's an amazing place. Thank, well, thank you so you much. Too you want to come around, come around and wave at the camera and <laughs> give you your gift card. This was Taylor from Sock Stars popping in. We had popping right here. You got her, Dave? <laughs> she in? Hey, why don't you have a seat? Have a seat. All right. I, I have some Hanukkah socks <gasps> from your store. I don't Hanukkah celebrate socks. Hanukkah, but I have Hanukkah <laughs> socks, and that's fine. Yeah. I have Hark socks. Uh, Army socks, because I was in the Army. Uh, St. Patrick's Day clover socks. <laughs> those are fun. Yes, I'm Irish, so we have some of those. Yes, yes, yes. We have a cool, um, one of my favorites are chocolate strawberry socks. So they were pink. We had them for Valentine's Day one year. Um, but they're chocolate strawberries. So they're strawberries and chocolate with like a little drizzle of chocolate on it. And we also have these octopus socks that <laughs> it's blue with these gorgeous orange and coral octopuses. It's amazing socks, nice. amazing socks. Yeah, cool. Really vibrant colors. Yeah, my daughter's teacher, Steve Brouse, shout out Steve, wonderful teacher, Brouse House. Uh, he likes cornhole, so we got cornhole socks. Yes, oh, really? Yes, like yes. anything that you like, yeah. you think of. they have it on a sock, and it's just great. And 18 LaSalle Road. Think of something else, and I'm sure we'll have that. It will always have something. Maybe yeah. you could start making cornhole. Uh, the and that would be really yeah. cool. We'd make the boards. Yeah, because yeah, that's so popular. So we also in Hark are gonna. I don't know if we started it yet or not, but we might be starting a uh, wood shopping place, uh, or um, um, I don't know, like a fun wood shopping for the individuals to learn how to do wood shopping, yeah. um, or anything like make like that. We're gonna make these wood bo boards maybe start next year, and we also have something called the cricket. So we can cut in like vinyl and um, oh. cardstock. That's how we make the, the t-shirts. Um, no? We can you can do iron on for t-shirts. We can make t-shirts, um, but that's how we do the cards. We cut cardstock and they glue on. That's how they make the greeting cards. But if they do the wood shop. We can make something like cornhole, and then we can we can print something to put something on mm. to there, and it, they can all everyone everything be handmade. Fun. So instead of yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's really cool. fun. Good well, spot. Well, it was great to see you. Yes. Thank, thank you, you for, for stopping this. in. Congratulations. <laughs> Come down on Wednesday, Wednesday and spend it. It opens Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Perfect. I think it's closed Mondays and Tuesdays. Well, I work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I'm down the street, so <laughs> I'll definitely stop in. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. And Gave thank you again for a wonderful toy yeah, drive. Thank you for coming. The opportunity was amazing to have you guys there. Oh, what about sales? Last year, Patricia told me something really cool so on, this on our year, toy drive. So this year we were record breaking for the weekend. So nice. last year we were 8,000 or a little under 8,000. 
this year we were almost ten thousand dollars we were wow. 200 short of 10, that's great 000. look at that Good yeah stuff. for the weekend so yeah. friday saturday sunday but the toy drive when i was there it was almost five thousand it was it was great it was great we were also on the news but the the toy drive everyone was coming in you know the because they were outside too they had a tent outside with hot chocolate and stuff like that so it was right. like great uh, great attention yeah. for everything yeah last year yeah, patricia nice. said it was their best day of the year yep. the yep. sock star day so that was COVID, really cool was, or the so, uh, toy drive day yeah because of covid it was it was so hard last year and then he came in and swooped us and nice cheers now to we that. have the toy drives yeah. <laughs> yeah. cheers yeah. Yes. All right. We'll cheers someday, well, thank Taylor. You guys. Thank you. Wonderful seeing you. Have a great day. See you, Taylor. <laughs> or night now. It's a little dark now. Yeah. A Have a great early. weekend. Yeah. Take care. Pop in guests. I love it. Bye. So we're, again, we're here with Mark from Mark's Christmas Trees. Mark, what's your last name? Last name is Honnenberg. H-O-N-I-B-E-R-G. Yeah. Honnenberg? Honnenberg. There's not many by that name yeah. around. Yes. Mark Honnenberg. <laughs> Got it. And you're at, well... Mark's Christmas Trees is at 1030 New Britain Ave. Their phone number is 860-883-9526. Right. You can also email trentlandscaping at comcast.net. Hours are 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. And on the weekend, you open at 9 a.m. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. What are three things that you do? You started to talk about John, too. What, what would make someone be a good tree Christmas tree person. What are three things that person should have? What are three traits or three characteristics? Traits. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Three traits are um, uh, fun, yep, and personality, yep, and people that like to help other people out. Uh, is very important because we don't just sell trees. We sell, I believe, we sell fun down there. Yeah, and so you got to be, yeah. you know, kind of an outgoing person to really do it effectively. Second thing is, I guess, physically, you have to be strong enough to do that yep. uh, because it's a lot of work, as Marnie, my wife, would attest because she did it by herself during the day while I was working for several years. So it's a hard thing to do. And uh, I'm trying and we, to think. We do have to shout out Marnie. Marnie? Marnie, yes. Marnie <laughs> is here in attendance. <laughs> say hi real loud. Hi, everybody. <laughs> She's the best. She's yeah. hanging out. Keeping Mark in line, giving yeah, them the look. A, like she's a, she's a shy Canadian. You uh, know? Just, okay. No, not really. Hey. Um, our places, I think, Eric, all about uh, about having fun. And, yeah. And, you know, we do some silly things down here, and it's it's important because people want to come in and have a good time yep. there and enjoy themselves, have a couple of laughs, and you know, we try to do that. We sell very nice trees, I believe, but we also enjoy the customers a lot yep. people come in in great moods generally because you know you're going to buy a christmas tree yeah. so yep. you know the spirit you, is high yeah by and large we do have some you ever have one at, like a spiteful pickup um uh, well the worst one that i think of was many years ago probably in my about my third year where i used to have uh you know family other than all right new game there. before you start yeah We're gonna, this is right on topic it's okay. called first last best worst yeah your first tree sale your last tree sale your best tree sale and your worst one so you seem to be going in on your worst one maybe so that's a game we are we did the three things okay yeah and this is a storytelling game uh first last best worst yeah you could start any order so i think you were on okay. your way to sorry to interrupt but you're on your way but to worst it, yeah but i'll tell you that a fighting part, couple it, or no oh that's there's, well there's been a couple no the one of the worst was was this uh, probably in year three, 40 years ago, uh, my sister was helping out one busy day, which there's four to six really busy days, the weekend days, and then we're open, of course, but they're not as busy during the week. So we had a very, very busy day, and I was running around a lot somewhere. I don't know, remember where. My sister came up to me and says, Mark, we have a little problem. I said, what's the matter? And she said, there are two... Uh, women that arrived at the same tree at the same time Ooh. and they both want it. Oh, yeah, this is and good. And they're not being real nice with each other. So I'm trying to think, well, what the heck could I do? <laughs> and so on my way over from the front of the lot to where they were in the back, I thought, well, okay, if they're adamant about each wanting it, maybe the fairest thing, you know, to do is to just draw a number or do something like, you know, like that. And so I thought it was a fine idea, and I presented it to the, the two women, and one of them said, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. 
And the other one said, no, bump, 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 blank, blank, blank way. We're not going to do that. That's my tree. And the other Whoa. woman who said that that would be fine, she just said, oh, look, just let her have it, will you? And uh, so we did let her have it. And the woman found another, another tree. But uh, yeah, it was a little bit testy for Man. a little bit. And then we've had one of the things we have about, uh, this isn't the worst thing, but a, a cool happening, I thought, was Marnie worked by herself for the first few years. Then my friend and second father, John, worked. And then another very good friend of ours, Vern, from uh, Nova Scotia, had just recently retired. He was a family therapist at, at a school system. And so he came down and hung out with us and, and helped out at the tree lot. And he was the main guy during the day for almost 13 years, I think it was. And as a retired family therapist, I got a big laugh when I was there too, because he used to counsel people on what <laughs> tree they should buy. Or if somebody came in and said something like, well, you know, I usually get a nine foot tree, but I think I'm going to get a six foot, but I'm really not sure. So he'd kind of, as a therapist, uh, shake and say, so you're a little bit conflicted about whether you should change from a nine foot tree to a six. And, they, and the person would say, yeah, and he helped them work them through whatever they do, whether they bought the nine footer like usual or a six footer. But it was funny to That's hear him funny. counseling. And another thing that comes to mind was a kind of a sad but a good story. The first year that he was down there working, um, a woman came in to buy a tree or a wreath or I don't remember what. And uh, she had just lost a nephew or niece that was only about 12 or 13. And the woman was so upset. And Vern kind of used to specialize uh, in grief counseling is one of the things he did. And he talked with a woman at length. And oh, wow. he really was a big help to her. So much so that she came in, I, I would venture a guess, at 10 days in a row following that just to be able to talk to him about that. So, oh, that's amazing, you know, we, yeah, that's really and, cool. You know, it was great because it was primarily during the week when it was quiet and, and it helped her out a lot and Vern got a chance to use his skills. So we didn't just, uh, you know, uh, have fun stuff. We were able to help people through, yeah. the, through somebody that had a bit of a crisis. That's great. But the customer service thing, I'll just tell you one other thing that I want to make sure I tell you is <clears throat> how important it is and, I, and that, carries on to date. Russ has a lot of really cool people, fun people that work there. Uh, but the biggest thing that stands out in my mind was out of many compliments I believe that we've received over the years is some fella came in after maybe maybe the eighth or ninth year and he said, Mark, I've got to tell you something. And he said, you know, I've been coming here for a number of years and he said, your trees are, are, are really nice. But he said, there's a lot of other places that have trees. But I keep coming here because I always feel better when I leave the, your lot because of the way you treat me than when I first came in. And yeah. I said, hey, thanks. That's the nicest compliment that anybody yeah. can pay uh, pay us by saying My wife feel said better. the same thing. Did she? Yeah. We, uh, I must have helped her then. If yeah. That, no, I'm only kidding. No, that's why you're here. I swear. You're, <laughs> I've, I've, this, I just met you for the first time like last weekend or two weekends ago when we got our tree. We've been getting our tree over there for 10 years now. And we must have just not crossed paths. And it goes to what you were saying, too. You were like, you sold my wife uh, these three snowmen, or oh, three yeah, Santas. Yeah, yeah, it's like the cool. stump that yeah. cuts off the bottom. Yes. You turn it into a Santa with three. Yeah. And you sold it to her. Yeah. And it, I'm like, 25 bucks, too. And, she, and, you, and, and, it, and had it, was a it had a missing nose. It had a missing nose. That was on purpose. Not, we're not all perfect. We all have some. And she still, still bought it. She was, I like, and then you looked at me and he goes, watch this. I'm going to get her to buy something else. <laughs> oh, and I was no, like, really? And you did. We got a wreath <laughs> yeah. for the door. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, and then we were like looking at a little wreath. She, you, guys, you don't want the little wreath. You want the big wreath. And I'm like, the little one was 20. I think the big one was like 30 or 40. I'm like, this guy. Look and then how happy were, we made you her. You were like joking and you were funny. And I was oh, like, yeah. listen, I felt it firsthand for the first time yeah. ever that this guy's hilarious. Yeah, we, this is why we're here. You bring the fun. My wife was like all about it on the way home. He's like, see, this is why we go down here. <laughs> that guy was really nice. He was funny. He had a couple jokes in there. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and, and, and we have uh, just... A lot of things have happened yeah. and then that we just people talked. enjoy. We ended up in a circle, me, you, and my wife, and talked for like a good five minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I left there. I'm like, I got to have this guy on the podcast. So I like left you a well, note. And you. then I went down three different times, and they were like, Mark was just here. 
I'm like, come on. They're like, Mark's <laughs> coming back later. I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah. So I left you a note inside with my business card. Yeah, and yeah. Note, Mark, yeah. call me. Yeah, yeah. well, no, but, it's, it's fun to be here. And yeah. another thing about the tree lot that I enjoy is seeing uh, people run into their friends and neighbors and people they haven't seen for so long. Yeah. And uh, there was, a, there was a, a couple there last year whose both sons used to work for me years ago. One of them has now been a West Hartford policeman for 15 years. Oh, wow. And the other son, older, it was a great guy that worked there. And they were in last year, and we chatted for quite a long time. And then they ran into some other people, and they were standing in the parking lot and talking with their friends for probably a half an hour. And I had to walk up to them just in a teasing way and say, you know, I'm going to have to rent you the space. <laughs> Cars can't get in here to park. So, uh, you know, and they just laughed. And That's funny. They did wrap it up and <laughs> said yeah. goodbye. Bring this somewhere else. Yeah, but every, people run into other people, yeah. friends and neighbors. Um, two weeks prior, uh, December 4th, we had a wonderful event at Lions Auto. We had a mural celebration. We collaborated with Journey Homes, collected furniture for homeless. Uh, food share collected food. Nice. We collected cans and bottles. Uh, we had Iron and Grain did the food. We had a jazz band. My former student, Dominic, I was his third grade teacher. He's in 10th grade now. Yeah. Him and his band, the 06, played jazz music. And it was just a wonderful event. The weather was nice. Yeah. We had jazz music playing, Christmas music. The food was great from Iron and Grain. Phenomenal food. Yeah. Uh, up by where we were collecting cans, I had my little solo stove. So we had like fire. It was just a wonderful event. And Everyone that popped in had a tree on top of their car. Oh, yeah. Because Lions Auto oh, is like right, right yeah, around yeah. the corner. Or, sure. No, straight through yeah. the underpass yeah. is you. Yeah. And everyone was like, yep, just got a tree. I'm like, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what the last guy said. Just got a tree. That everyone was, was going to get a tree. Yeah. Stopped in and said, hey, what's going on over here? Nice. Either made a donation, yeah. uh, checked out our mural. Definitely want to suggest check out the mural on Lions Auto. Uh, thank you again, Ash Arts. Ash. Um, she did a, a mural. So Lions Auto, we have the Be a Good Friend uh, right there on the side of the wall. It's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. And uh, it was just a great event, but it was so funny. Everyone, uh, my friend Brooks, my friend Marsha, they all showed up with trees on their car yeah. coming from you. And, and I did not see it because I was down at the tree <laughs> lot. I didn't see yeah. any of the, your event down there. I wish I had known. We could have walked up. It's that close, really. We yeah, it is walking distance. Help out a little bit, yeah. Yeah. So you got best, worst, first, last. Do you remember your first tree you ever sold 43 years ago? <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I really don't. I know, um, I'm kidding. That, yeah, That'd I be hope. a tough one. Yeah. That'd be yeah. impressive, though. Yeah. I, I, here's, here's one tree story that I love to tell because it was maybe my favorite tree out of many, many, many trees over 43 years. Um, probably in about the fourth year of starting the business, so that was 39 years ago. Marty and I were still living in Nova Scotia at the time, and um, I went down to see the farmer prior to the season starting and looked around at his fields, and you know, we, we talked about how expensive the trees were gonna be and what he had, et cetera. Anyway, he said, I wanna show you one tree. And he said, I don't know if you're gonna want it or not. And I said, okay, sure. His name was Lloyd, and, uh, and uh, Lloyd and I walked down the field to this one tree, and on the way down there, he said, I call it the lump. And I said, why do you call it the lump? And he said, you'll see. Anyway, we walked down and got to this tree that had to be about 10 feet tall, which is not all that unusual, a little taller than most, but about maybe 12 or 14 foot wide. Oh, wow. It, and that's why he called the lump. And he it's said, like Mark, can you? Gumdrop or something. Yeah, it was nutty. It was the biggest triangle you've ever seen or whatever. But, so he said, do you want that? And I said, absolutely, somebody will want it because there's a tree for everybody, no matter what size, shape, or whatever, somebody is going to love it. So I said, yeah, I'll take that. So I got it down there. And, and then again, this was in about my fourth year of, of having the business. And this fellow who I knew, who used to work at Sears, came in, and he fell in love with the lump. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, you know, yeah, you can have it. And whatever the expense was, I don't remember. This is near 40 years ago. And um, I said, how are you going to get it home? Because he came in in a car that was a Chevy Vega. And you're probably <laughs> no too young to <laughs> remember that. It was a very small car. It was about the size, let's say, of a Honda Civic or okay. a 
Toyota Corolla, okay? So it was small. Anyway, I said, how are you gonna get it home? He says, oh, I'm gonna take it on my car. I said, Tony, you can't put that on your car. Anyway, he said, yeah, we'll get it on, okay. So we put it on his car, and this is a visual that I don't know if I can possibly describe. The butt of the tree stuck over the, uh, over the windshield. The tree went down the length of the car and down just about to the ground. And on the sides, it was actually on the ground, on both sides. So can you picture that? Now, this is before so cell phone. tree with wheels. It was not, it was so cool. <laughs> Today, if I had ever had a, a cell phone, back then we didn't have them, 39 years ago. Anyway, I would have taken a picture, and that picture would have been seen around the world. Oh, I'm sure of it. The, the, That's the tree, That's so both cool. sides were dragging on the ground, and the, the top of the tree. How did he get he, in first and then put the tree on top? How did he get into the driver's side to drive? Yeah, I, he probably, I don't even remember that. He probably had to crawl under it because it was <laughs> down all the way. All, it oh was my God, nutty. That's amazing. It was the one picture. We have a lot of pictures. Some of them are current pictures in our, on our website and on the Facebook page. I think it's Mark's Christmas trees, well, both of them, whatever. But anyway, um, we have a ton of pictures, but that was the one picture that I so Should regret have, not yeah. having. The second picture, which was uh, that I regret not having, was we had a neighbor of ours came down, and they, their daughter, who was six now, was about three at the time, and she picked up a very small Christmas tree and, like we do, carry them when they're tied up over our shoulder. And here's this beautiful little three-year-old walking through our lot, carrying a tree like she was working at the tree lot nice. or something when we didn't get a picture of it. So those uh, are the two yeah. missed pictures. But we have a lot of pictures that we did get, and including the fellow who annually buys a tree and rides his bicycle home. He carries the tree on the back of his bike. He straps it to his body somehow, and uh, it's pointing down, and he rides away with that. And then we have- You have a, that online? I think- MarksChristmasTree.com. Yes, uh, yeah, on the Facebook, there is one. I'll share the link that, on the, in the podcast. Okay, yeah. That's and, a good picture. And there's another riding one. Riding a bike. Huh? Riding a bike, which was cool. And then there's another car that came in, I think, three years ago that we do also have a picture of that has um, the entire car is wrapped in Christmas paper, Christmas <laughs> wrapping paper, the whole car. So whatever, we like doing some. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Now, I'm sure with 43 years experience, doing a wonderful job and uh, just exciting stuff that you have so many stories to share. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Oh, I, I love they're, that. they're going. They're in my. Yeah, you have a journal. Let's it. talk about the journal. Have, well, or I just, a diary or notes to sell for. Yeah. When, when I. Do you want to call it a book earlier? No, it's not going to be. It's not going to be for sales. Just for me and my family and some friends and people that help me out. But it's, uh, you know, it's just my favorite memories of of, thirty five years now. It's forty three. But I'm, as we talked about, Russ is now the owner. But I was the owner and Marnie for 35 years. And it's just about the stuff that happened, how I got started and things like that. And only be of interest, I'm sure, to family and friends. But, you know, I mean, some of the, the, the story with the Chevy Vega with that tree is in there. And then one of my other favorite stories, and actually they worked right around the corner here from West Hartford Brewers and Roasters, the ambulance company that is located there, I think they're still there. Um, they came in one day and two of the ambulance drivers were doing a day-long collection of toys and other things for a needy family, and they asked me if I'd be willing to give them a Christmas tree, and I said, absolutely, you know, whenever you want. And they said, well, we'll come back after we do this other running around, and we'll come back about four o'clock. And I said, whenever you want. Anyway, the ambulance, and I'd kind of forgotten that they were coming in, because it was one of the busy days. And anyway, the ambulance comes in with lights flashing the siren on and, and it took me a second to remember that they were coming in to pick <laughs> up a tree. Anyway, they came in, shut the sirens off and left the lights flashing and uh, two women got out, uh, EMTs got out and said, okay, yeah, we're here for a tree, great, so let's, let's go. We walked around and found a tree that they liked to give to this family that they were donating it to and we picked out the tree they wheeled their gurney over, strapped the tree in the gurney, and wheeled it back to the ambulance and put it into the ambulance. And yeah, That's it was transportation. It, yeah, it was it was great. But again, that was before cell phone days, so I don't have a picture of that anywhere. I don't think. But yeah, a lot of fun stuff that we had happened down there. That's great. Yeah.
Yeah, Russ has got since 2014. Russ t- took it over. Yeah. Uh, you hire a lot of uh, West Hartford kids and Newington kids. So you, yeah. and the staff, like you said, I had I forgot his name, but you know, really friendly, good kid, yeah. Connor. He's a Connor High School yeah, kid. Yeah. I know that for yeah. a fact. Forgot his name, but yeah, great guy. Um, yeah. Yeah, just it's um, it's it's a real uh, which I'm so pleased and proud of that it's carrying on as a community business because yeah. that that was important to me to keep it in the community. We have a lot. Of, I, I I would venture to say there's been between 500 and a thousand high school and college age kids that have helped out in the last wow. number of years. Yeah including one guy that you had talked about that's a teacher that yeah. he started helping me when he was 16 and uh, he's been there for 20 some odd years because he likes it. The kids all like it. it yep. you know, Russ, one of the things he said to me earlier this year was, you know, how businesses are having a very difficult time finding people, which is of course true. He said, we've got so many people. I can't, I can't use all the people that would like to work here because it, it's a fun kind of thing. You yeah, know? Dave Vol- Volpe. Yeah, Dave Volpe. Yeah. Volpe. 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 Yeah. But a great guy. Dave and Chris have a hilarious picture. They're leaning in the oh. um, the Christmas tie thing, the plastic. What do you yeah, call that? Yeah, the baler. Baler. Yeah. They're in the baler, and it's on Instagram or uh, Facebook. Chris, yeah. Chris, big tall guy. Chris Jackson, great guy, funny. Yeah. Yeah. Dave is phenomenal. Dave's always there. I feel like, and yeah. I can't believe he's a young dude to be there for 28 years. I know, he started young, but he loves being down there and the customers love him. And he's a teacher and he's a baseball coach. Yeah. He's a good friend, be a good friend. Dave, you're a a good friend. Yeah. Um, He's been there the longest and every time he has a fresh haircut. You ever notice his haircut? Yeah. He gets a haircut once a week. Does he? Yeah. How often do you cut your hair? Uh, Once every four years. (laughs) Yeah, I don't have much as you may have noticed. (laughs) Nice. And, no. and I don't really even need it after four years. I just do it for the heck of it, yeah. No, Dave's a great guy. And then uh, Steve Ruff. Steve. Big Steve with the I made a mistake. Actually, Steve has been there longer than Dave. Really? Yeah, because Steve's a few years older. I, I okay. have to ask him how long, but he's the... And now his yeah. son Nick helps out. Yeah, and, and I know he, Nick. Will, he will be there for for some time to come, Nick, because he's will a be young there, fella, definitely working there. and that's great. Again, community business and, yeah. and families. He, yeah. he did my, Nick put my tree on my my car, because he's yeah. a Wolcott student at one time, he's in middle school now, Yeah. but he put the tree on my car, tied it down, and he, I think he was in like fifth grade at the time. Yeah. And he also did something really cool, shout out to Nick, he raised money and collected money and donated a gift card to Friends of Feeney. Isn't like that Nick, great? As a young kid, no matter the size, yeah, yeah. shape or age, you can help out and give back yeah. uh, and contribute and be right. charitable. And it doesn't always have to be the Friends of Feeney. It could be Journey. It could be Journey Homes. It could be Food Share. It could be your favorite charity. Just mm-hmm. be a good friend, be you charitable, and help yeah. someone out. And yeah. Nick Ruff, my guy. What money are we? So I can tell my boy Nick Ruff. Thank you again for the gift card. We're already 40 minutes with Feeney. Yeah, but wait, I've got a lot more stories. Yeah, to, no, no, no. no. We're, <laughs> we're going to shut this place down. Actually, we don't even have to shut this place it's down because it's open. already it's shut down. It's not open, yeah, yeah. But the, I, want, I want to tell you about Chris because uh, yeah, Chris is one of my favorites. Chris is a co- very cool guy, and his two daughters have worked uh, at our place for a number of years, and they're delightful young women. Anyway, one of my favorite stories, and Chris knows the story that I'm going to tell you, is three years ago, Marnie and I were not working once, I wasn't working one Sunday, but we were out running errands or whatever. It was Sunday afternoon and we pulled into, I said, let's go by the tree lot. I want to see what's happening. And uh, so we pulled in the parking lot. I didn't even get out of the car and Marnie saw Chris, Chris saw Marnie. So he came over, Marnie got out of the passenger door, left the door open and was talking to Chris about whatever. I'm still sitting in a passenger seat. Anyway, this fella comes along, maybe a few years younger than me, and says, excuse me, can you, to Chris, excuse me, can you tell me, is Mark still connected with this tree lot? And Chris, who's quick as can be, kind of lowers his head and he says, oh, I'm sorry, he died about a year ago. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sitting in the, dri- in the driver's seat, still wow. there, so I got out wow. to tell the guy that I hadn't quite gone yet anyway. But 
<laughs> Chris, that was a harsh one. That's a good uh, joke. No, we Rough have, joke, but good. You know what, people? That's another thing I believe the customers like is, is the interaction with, with the yeah. people that work there. And uh, we yeah. have a good time, and it's very funny. Yeah. I just saw Chris. He has a Friends of Feeney hoodie. And I go down, I'm like, where's your hoodie? He goes, yeah. I want to keep that nice. I don't want tree yeah, sap on it. I'm like, yeah. all right, I'll let it slide. It, it will get ruined. Well, and, and when I'm down there, and if I get talking with somebody for uh, a little while, which happens quite frequently, <laughs> Chris will frequently come over. He's a big man. He puts his arm around my shoulder. He says, come on, Mark. It's time for you to go back to the home now. <laughs> so That's customer always gets a kick out of it, and I don't, I don't mind it. We have fun. Yeah. Dave's great. Dave has a Friends of Feeney hoodie. Dave has been there for a while. Chris, Steve. No, you, yeah. Trent. Uh, yeah. Brush is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. You, have, in, you have a great staff. Uh, you. They're yeah. a great staff. And, um, and, and, and by the way, you may not know this, but Russ, he, the reason he got to know the tree business was he was one of the Connard kids many years ago. He was probably about 16, and he worked there for a few years. Uh, yeah, yeah. He just so, helped out. Yeah, And then yeah. he liked it. And, yeah. Well, he's in landscaping. He's in landscaping, which is a terrific fit, by the way, with Christmas trees. Right? He has, so you're in landscaping, yeah. you do the trees. Yeah. At, they always end the Park Road Parade, Mark's Christmas yeah. Trees with Santa. It was yeah. like a known thing that yeah. it happened every year. Yeah. And, and I let the Santa? cat out of the bag. No, Chris was Santa. Come on. First Chris year. Jackson, yeah, yeah. Santa Claus. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I don't know. They had a suit big enough for that guy? He's like 6'6". Six, six. He made a great Santa. He really did. Yeah. Actually, in one of the videos that exists somewhere is Chris dressed as Santa and his daughter dressed as an elf up on top of the trailer <laughs> leading a sing-along. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it was, it's a great video. Yeah, yeah. And then Chris's daughter did the drone video. Right? No, she didn't do or the she, cut she it. put the yeah, she, she put the, yes, the, the that's right. three different videos together. That's right, did that's a great right. job. But it, it's quite a hoot to see Chris and his daughter up there leading jingle bells or wow. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and it, was he dressed as an elf or uh, Santa? No, he was dressed as Santa, but Chris does have an elf outfit. I thought he I does, saw him as an elf. Once yes, too. he does. Uh, yeah. Like He's, the movie elf, Will Ferrell elf? Yeah. Or? That's the exact yeah. outfit yep. that he has. Yeah. yeah. And the scary. other day it's a sight. It's, it is scary to see that. And the other day, and I don't know if you've seen it, but they did another video that they put on Facebook that is Chris in some kind of Santa Claus shorts. And his daughter is wearing a Santa outfit, and then Nick is there, and they're dancing to, I forget what song, but it, it, all about fun. My guy Nick Ruff, my uh, guy? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. The yeah he was great. on the video dancing, so you need to check that out. That's so good. Yeah. No, we had two great events. We had wonderful people in the community. I'm just happy to chat with you. This is amazing. You're, yeah. you're yeah. definitely. What about some trivia? You ready for some Christmas trivia? Christmas trees. <laughs> then we got uh, crazy questions. Sure. Okay, yeah. Do you know the seven most popular Christmas trees? Seven most popular Christmas yep. trees? Uh, yeah, balsam fir, Fraser fir, blue spruce, um, Korean fir, uh, yeah, blue, um, white spruce is one, scotch pine. Um, oh boy, I know them, but I'm drawing a blank. So five out of seven. One Do starts I, with a D. Oh, Douglas fir. Yep. Yeah, that's one starts with an N. What starts with an N? Noble fir, yes, Help in thank the back, you, phone a friend, <laughs> phone a friend. Good job, Miriam. <laughs> B, did you say the B one? That's easy. That's like a popular one. Which one? The B, starts with a B. Blue spruce. A blue spruce. Another one, balsam. I said balsam, but oh, that you was, said that. That's already. my first one because this one's what, a state that starts with V. State a, that starts with V. State that starts with V. What Virginia the? pine. That's what it says oh, here. Oh, that's know. not popular. <laughs> Maybe Virginia, but okay. <laughs> if All right. How many so. how many tree farms do you think there are in the United States? Oh, um, I don't have it. Um, let's see. All right, I'll give you There's multiple guess, multiple choice. Yeah. 100,000, 15,000, or 1,000? 15. You got it, 15,000. Yeah. May, may I also add to that is that it's such a difficult thing for Christmas trees, especially now with the change of climate to be grown, and the number of farms, very sadly, has decreased dramatically. We, 25, 30 years ago, in Connecticut alone, 
there was about 500 farms, Christmas trees specifically. Now there's only, there's less than 200. Oh, wow. It's, it's, there, yeah. there was an email or something going on. There was a shortage of Christmas trees. Big time shortage. This, this year. year? Yeah. yeah but you yeah. guys were still loaded and stocked. We were. Why very, is that? Well, I can tell you, and we were so thankful and lucky because the guys that we work with had a very good growing year with no problems. Part of the shortage was due to, uh, as an example, there's one farmer um, in Quebec where a lot of trees come from that is one of the biggest in the world, I believe. He usually harvests about 90,000 trees a year, which is big time. Jeez. Uh, it sends them all over the world. Anyway, he had a very late frost, and because of that, uh, he was only able to harvest 20,000. Now, that's just one farmer. So if you multiply all the other people that had issues like that, if you think about those poor people out west that with the forest fires and the extreme heat in Oregon, some of the Douglas fir, which that's mainly where it comes from, also other places, but mainly Douglas fir from Oregon and Washington, some of the poor farmers out there lost 90% of their crops. Ah, permanently lost. Bad. It's terrible, yeah. A lot of it related to climate change. All right, and how many um, Christmas trees are growing right now on U.S. farms? 100 million, 350 million, or a million? I want to know how you find, found these. <laughs> yeah, Google's. The, 350, the Google machine. 350 million. 350, you're on a roll. Is, oh, it is right. Okay. So down at 1030 New Britain Avenue, you guys sell bal balsam furs for $65. Balsam fur premium. What's the difference between a balsam fur and a balsam fur premium? Yeah, so there's several types of balsam fur. One of them is, and we have very few of those, it's called naturally grown. It's never touched, never shaped, never sheared, and that's a natural tree. Then there's some that have l light shearing on them, um, and then there are some that have very heavy shearing, and those are the ones that you know, you consider the perfect shape Christmas tree. Premium? Those are the premium. The ones yeah. shared are premium? Yeah. I did yeah. read, because this, this data might be from 2012, I yeah. don't know, but it's Christmas tree facts. Right in the Google, yeah. first one that comes <laughs> up, um, it says that most Christmas trees are shared, which I didn't know. Yeah. I thought they yeah. were just naturally oh, come it, out like that. Eric, there are so, there's so much work to grow in Christmas trees. Um, people would come in over the years and say to me, Mark, do you, do you grow these trees that you sell? I say, no, it's far too much work. I, I couldn't do all the work it, that's involved. It's really a ton of work, which is one of the reasons why, you know, the, the expense is, is not real low because yeah. there's a lot of work attached to the actual growth. They have to get out there twice a year and shear them. They have to fertilize them. Oh, while they're they still get, in the ground, they yeah, get sheared? Yeah, the trees Man. take approximately, a full-size tree, tree takes approximately eight to ten years to grow. And they don't start sharing them till they're about five years old. And then they uh, start sharing them twice a year. A lot of work, they're out there in the tough weather doing that. They're oh, fertilizing, wow. they're stepping in gopher holes on the tree fields, they're getting stung by bees. So it's a, it's a lot of work. If you were to explain to a third grader, where is Nova Scotia? Yeah, okay, first thing, explaining to a third grader, it is uh or a 43 year old that doesn't know where nova scotia okay, is as yeah. a as a yeah. teacher no okay, i'm kidding yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah i don't yeah. but uh well first of is all is it the province or the city is it the state or what are we yep. what's nova scotia nova scotia is, is there a city is in there an absolutely beautiful province go. in nova scotia in nova scotia is in canada so gotcha. if you as a third grader or a 43 year old know where maine is okay go up all the way through maine cross the border and take a right and you'll get to Nova Scotia. Got it. Yeah. Near Quebec or no? It, no, not near Quebec. Because I think yeah. Old Orchard Beach, there's signs for Quebec, I think. Yeah, I, I wouldn't wrong. doubt it. Yeah, you can get, yeah, yeah. Or Lake George. Is Lake George there signs for Quebec too? Maybe both. I'm not sure. Yeah, there, there's certain. I mean, it says it like 600 miles away, so I'm sure there's yeah, a sign anywhere. Ways, but. Yeah, <laughs> Quebec, actually the border from here, where we are right here, West Hartford Brewing and Roasting, uh, you can get to the Canadian border in about uh, Quebec in about five hours, straight north on 91, and you'll get there. All right. And nice. actually, where you would cross up, I believe, off of if you went up through 91, there's a couple of ways to go. You'd get into one of the areas that grows a bazillion Christmas trees up there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So Nova Scotia, do you still have a house there? We do not. No, we sold our house in 1983 and moved back to Connecticut. And we 
visit there every year. Um, it's been our annual vacation since we moved back here in 1983. Used to take our two daughters up when they were younger. Now Marnie and I go up ourselves and we split, spend a little longer up there now, a month or so in the summer. And we still have, Marnie has family up there. We have friends that we used to hang out with. And uh, So is Marnie, are you a there. Nova Scotian? Is that, yes. That's what that's called? You're a Nova Scotian? Yeah. Mar Nova Scotia, yeah. Blue Noser? Blue Noser. Yeah. What's the sailing ship called the Blue Nose? Okay. If, you, if you've ever seen, which you have, but you may not remember, the Canadian Dime, there's a sailing vessel on there, and okay. that's the Blue Nose. It was a famous racing schooner of many, many years ago, and they put a picture of that on Very the dime. Cool. Nova Scotia is a magnificent uh, province. There's no two ways about it. Actually, Eric, when I first finished college, I taught in Hartford for a year. I was teaching school and had the summer free and had heard about what a beautiful place Nova Scotia was and so I and a buddy from college went up there to spend a month because we were both free during the summer and I loved the place and met Marnie up there back in 1971 uh -huh. and uh, yeah the place and Marnie stole my heart. Oh, Marnie. <laughs> Where's the violins? <laughs> That's beautiful. I was gonna ask, yeah, so yeah. You met during that month. Yeah. Hit it off. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Came, came back uh, to Connecticut and uh, resigned from the job I had teaching in Hartford and packed my car and went back up to Nova Scotia. What yeah. were you teaching? Uh, I was teaching an alternate education program in uh, Bedford Street off of Albany Avenue in Hartford. It was for kids who were really struggling in the regular school system. And, wow, that's uh, great. Yeah, yeah, it that's was. That's amazing. It was. I enjoyed it. Do you have a favorite teacher? Uh, favorite teacher? Probably the fellow's name from high school. I went to Northwest Catholic High School oh, okay. 100 years ago, or sometimes it feels like that. Anyway, uh, probably Dan Dwyer was my favorite teacher. He was an English teacher, a really great guy. And you remember why you liked him? Uh, just, to, just he was down to earth, you know, no fancy stuff, down to earth, very, very helpful. When I finished high school, uh, he actually, I had some questions for him when I was in college about the uh, uh, English program up there, and I had some questions about a test. What do you think about how I should respond to this or that or whatever? And called him up, and he couldn't have been more helpful to me, and, you know, so no, he was a great. great guy. Yeah, yeah. Dan Dwyer. Yeah. The Many same Northwest ago. Catholic? Is it still in the same place over it's, by Wampanoag? It's still in the same place. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I went there, I was the second class in there. And uh, so it was a fairly large school to only have two high school classes of students. But then each year, you know, they added classes and got, you know, more and more. And actually, when I went to high school, they had just put electricity in, Eric. Uh, you know, was that? Wow. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so was... Did you go to school with Jesus? You know Jesus? Yes, yeah, yeah. He and I were classmates. Yeah, he was the one with the beard, and I was not okay. with the beard because so I don't, can't have any hair. He's yes. in your yearbook? Yes, he right. is, yeah. <laughs> when Burger King was around, was it Burger Prince? Was he, was he a king yet? Burger Prince? Yeah, Burger yeah, King? No, yeah, he was just a prince when I was in school, yeah, yeah. I knew Fred Flintstone, actually, truth be told. Yeah, he was, yeah. He and I used to have those pedal cars that we used to go. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Old jokes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, province of Nova Scotia since 1971, and they have presented Boston with a Christmas tree. In sure, gratitude yeah. for release supplies after a Boston ship exploded in seven, 19... Do you know anything about this? Yeah. Did you say a Boston ship? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. They no. were... Um, a French ship, the Mont Blanc. Yeah, French and. Yeah. There was a collision in Halifax, Nova Scotia, yeah, in was, the harbor. It was terrible. Horrible, horrible. That's I think 2,000 people died, and then there was a huge um, storm afterwards. It was, it storm. was just, just horrible. It, it's, it's called the Halifax Explosion, and there's been many, many books written about it. I don't know if there's been any movies, but it was absolutely horrible. As Marnie said, 2,000 people died. The entire north end of the city on the water uh, was devastated. It, was, it didn't exist at all anymore, and a storm ensued, and it was just a horrible thing. Anyway, what happened in Boston is people got news of that. I think it was 1917, as you mentioned. They got news of that, and they put together train after train of medical people and supplies, and they came up here. <coughs> and um, 
they helped, they came up to Nova Scotia, rather, and they helped out tremendously with the devastation that was up there. And, you know, a number of years later, I don't know, maybe you said uh, a number of years later, in, in thanks for all of Boston's help, they send down a, uh, a 50 foot or 60 foot tree, which is put up in the, in the Prudential Center in all Boston. All right, great. So you know all about that. That's I know great. all about I that. I saw that and fun let, fact highlighted in it. I had to share, and I'm glad you can elaborate on it. That's and let, awesome. me, let me elaborate one step further, Please. which I think is kind of a funny story. Um, every year, some of the farmers up there, people of Nova Scotia, who are absolutely terrific people, they, they vie to be the tree that gets selected uh, to be donated to the city of Boston. So anyway, about s five or six years ago, a fellow, one of the farmers, got selected to donate the tree, which he did, but then the city of Boston, in their wisdom or not, and with some of the kind of crazy political correctness that's going on in this world, said that they couldn't call the tree a Christmas tree. And I read a quote from the farmer in Nova Scotia <laughs> saying, if I had known they were going to call the thing a bleeping Christmas tree, I never would have donated it because he wasn't happy because it was a Christmas tree. But that's yeah. my note about politi <laughs> some political But that's correctness. so cool that they, they'll donate the tree to Boston yeah. every year to thank every them year. since... Yep because of helping the supplies. I yeah. think that's just really cool and that connection. Yeah. So are you dual citizen to Canada? I am not. I never are became you? a Canadian citizen. Canadian. You're Canadian? Marnie's Canadian. Can you speak French? Just a little bit, yeah. Come on, Marnie, say a little French. <laughs> our daughter, our daughters are both Canadian and US citizens and our other daughter who is expected home this week is a French citizen too. So she has three citizenships. Oh, wow. And she's coming home hopefully this week. And she lives in France. She lives in France, loves it over there, and the terrific area she lives in, and I understand why she loves it. Um, so she has three citizenships, and um, she, yeah, hopefully she'll be, she hasn't been able because of COVID to come home uh, for two years. So we'll be seeing her Wednesday night if everything goes well. Great. For the first time. That's so exciting. Yeah, we're it's very been two excited. Years. What's her name? Her name is Leah. Leah. And her other daughter is Carrie. Carrie. Who's a social worker in a school system in New Britain. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's well. Thank you, uh, Carrie. You're doing wonderful work. Yeah. Because um, that's a tough job. Yeah. Challenging job. Yes. So very. thank you. I know yeah. firsthand. I've been a teacher for 18 years. So. Yeah. Great. Well, and oh, something else too. Well, a couple things. We're gonna go a couple more trivia. But the Fraser fir, which was really cool, the Connard kid, I didn't know, he goes, are you hanging heavy ornaments on it because you need a Fraser tree? I guess it's more sturdy. Yeah, you know? yeah, a Li little bit more sturdy. The primary um, benefit of a Fraser fir is it holds its needles better than any other tree there is. But there's not, there's a real, you talk about shortages, that's the tree that's in, in you know, most short supply. So. Um, we can't get enough, and they're a lot more expensive too. So we're very comfortable with balsam fir, which we get from Nova Scotia, which are more moderately priced, and they hold their ornaments terrific. There are some trees that make beautiful trees that you, you can't hold any kind of a heavy-duty ornament on. Like a white pine tree can make a magnificent Christmas tree looks-wise, but they won't hold anything that's of any weight at all. So oh, wow. we, we prefer Boston and Fraser. Yeah. Good to know. And yeah. that's again, 1030 New Britain Ave, uh, markschristmastrees.com. There's a $10 delivery fee. You guys deliver now too. Yeah, I we saw do. that. That's yeah, awesome. We deliver in roughly in this area and it, we try to do whatever we can to make, uh, make it easy for yeah. people. Yeah. When was the first Christmas tree decorated and where? Well, okay. What this is not going to be answered. I think I got the other ones, but not this. That's a um, tough one. Yeah, I got to say, in the, I'm thinking in the 1700s, uh, the first Christmas tree lot was in 1844 by a fella who was named Mark, and I forget his last name, but it was M A R C yep. in New York City. That was the first Christmas Let's tree see, lot. Yeah, I might have that. And uh, yeah, Mark. Um, 
Brooklyn. Mm. In Brooklyn? Yeah. Yeah. Very but good. I thought it was kind of... So it was Latvia in the 1500s. 1500s. Okay, in Latvia. Yeah, I knew it was... Uh, First yeah, printed reference there. to a Christmas tree appeared in Germany, 1500s. 1500s in Germany, yep. Uh, or, or, yeah. Oh, who put the electric lights on? Who's the first to come up with the electric lights, Christmas tree lights? Yeah. You know that one? No, Thomas Edison. Yeah, Thomas <laughs> no, Edison's really? assistant, Edward Johnson, came oh, up sure, with the idea of Christmas. I remember 1882. that well. Is that right? It was yeah, you went to school assistant. with him too, right? Yeah, I did. Thomas yeah, Edison? Yeah. Did you call him Tommy? I heard you called him Tommy. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I How about remember. when's the first tree in Rockefeller Center? Whoa. Uh, 1928. 1933. Whoa, not bad. We'll give you a point. We'll give you a point. Yeah. How heavy is the star that sits on top of the tree? Yeah, 14.3 pounds. I have no <laughs> idea. That's great. What? How heavy is it? 550 pounds. Oh, okay. Which is yeah. kind of crazy. How many lights go on it? Yeah. yeah. Um, 30,000. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Presidents, how's your president in Christmas tree trivia? Not good. Who was the first president to place a Christmas tree? You went to school with him, too. Yeah. First Christmas must tree. Be, must have been George, right? I cannot tell a lie. Franklin Pierce, the 14th oh, of president. of course. Franklin Pierce, yeah, yeah. Who started the National Christmas Tree Lighting Ceremony on the White House, White House lawn? Who started that? Uh, Taft. Kelvin. That's close. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, who banned the Christmas tree for environmental reasons? Not, Teddy. Oh, okay. I was going to say somebody else, but we don't want to get into that discussion. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a, when you're done, I have a trivia, All right, kind get, of a interesting. Wait, Mark, wait. First Christmas tree lot was started by Mark Carr in Mark New Carr. York, 1851. Yeah. Man, keep That was yeah. awesome. I, I don't know how I you know, know your that, stuff. Yeah, Mark Carr. Yeah, yeah. All right, what do you so, got? You know, so here's mine. I thought it was really interesting, I think. Um, so... Growing up as a young kid, I knew that I had a great, great uncle who was a gardener for Mark Twain, and his wife helped in the kitchen, John and Ellen O'Neill. And I knew their name for forever since I was a kid, and my mother used to talk about them, and my uncle used to talk about, you know, the connection to the Mark Twain house. Anyway, somewhere, probably about 35 years ago, the curator for the Mark Twain house at the time called me and she said, I have a picture you might want to see. She knew I was in the Christmas tree business. And I went down there and she showed me a picture of my great, great uncle selling Christmas trees at the Mark Twain house to add to his income because he didn't have a great income. So he used to sell Christmas trees wow. at the Mark Twain house. I still have so that been picture. been in the family lineage for that's years. What, yeah, even know that's, it. that's the first so thing cool. I jumped all over. Wow, this has been 150 year. I think it was the year 1892 or something. Mark Twain wasn't living there. He was living overseas. But he was still the gardener, caretaker of his house, as was his wife. And it was your wife. great, great? Great, great uncle. Yeah, John O'Neill. Yeah. Very cool. So well, Dave pretty. does something really cool. I don't know if you mentioned that earlier, but the family, what's your family thing? Uh, we were talking about earlier, the, uh, you should the get family your stories? family stories. So he can put together a collection of DVDs and yeah. video of uh, interviews and just a really good, nice keepsake for families. And uh, you have some wonderful stories. You can share some of the stuff yeah. in your book. I think if your great uncle selling trees uh, at the Mark Twain house is amazing. So again, I th yeah, I think what David's doing is amazing, and I think that's going to become, if it's not already, a very popular thing for people to want to record for posterity or whatever yeah. the word is, their life history and so many interesting stories and interesting people out there. So, I'd encourage people to call Dave for yeah. Uh, Dave does great that. things. Dave at Direct Line Media. He volunteers his time for Friends of Feeney. He's been with me for 33 episodes. Uh, I can't thank him enough. Dave is a good friend. Uh, I can't thank you. This is a wonderful interview. Um, so we get a sponsor. We have a sponsorship. Yeah. Donut Crazy sponsors crazy questions. Yeah. So are you ready for crazy questions? Oh, yeah, sure I am. <laughs> crazy question time. These are from third graders. Would you rather have to sleep on a Christmas tree or sleep under a Christmas tree? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, I would rather sleep under a Christmas tree if it was a cold night because they could provide a lot of warmth. And related to that is we give people Christmas tree branches to put over their 
plants to protect them from frost and the cold weather. Uh -huh. So yeah, so they, they, they kick warmth. off like a lot of oxygen too, yeah. or something. I yeah. saw. Would you live? Would you like an elf on the shelf? You sure. Know what elf on the shelf is? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you like a fake tree or a real tree? I Silly definitely question. like a fake. Uh, <laughs> no, I like real trees. And by the way, if anybody, it has been a standard line that I've been saying for a hundred years now at the tree lot, and that is that if somebody comes in and says, well, Mark, you know, I got to tell you, I decided to go with a fake tree this year. My standard line, and I've said it to a number of people, is does that mean you're going to eat a plastic turkey at Thanksgiving <laughs> next year? And it kind of is fake trees, by the way, take about a hundred years to decompose in a landfill. And there's a lot of them thrown out. Real tree yeah. is recyclable. And if you don't take your tree down, by the way, which I think is a great idea to leave it up outside if you can put it up, it provides a home for birds and you know other animals. So oh, it's, you know, cool. it's, a, it's a very good natural, good environmental product. Yeah. I like it. So yeah, real. that's from our friend Anna. So great questions, Anna. Would you rather Want a dream car or a dream phone for Christmas? Uh, I would probably rather have a dream car because I probably couldn't figure out how to operate a dream phone. Yeah, do you have an iPhone? I have or a flip phone. I have a or a rotary phone. I have a uh, no. I have an Android, right? Oh, okay. But I will tell you about flip phones. I just soon have that because I, you know, I I never had an Android type of phone till about five years ago. I had a flip phone and I didn't use it much, which I was fine with. I went into, my phone died after a number of years and I went into the AT&T store and some young person, I think they're all young people that work there, came up and said, can I help you? I said, yeah, I have this flip phone, but it died. I want another flip phone and I don't want anything fancy. I want another flip phone. So he came up to me, he, he, said, he said to me, well, he said, Here's a flip phone, it's $50, $60 or whatever, and it looked like a regular flip phone. I said, I'll take it. And he said, and he said okay. He said, let me have your old phone that wasn't working um, to s transfer some information from your old phone to your new flip phone. I said, oh, great, thanks. I have no idea what he was talking about. After about 10 minutes, he comes back to me and he says, I'm having a hard time transferring the, the, your contact list from your old phone to your new phone. I looked at him and I said, What's a contact list? I have no idea what that. So I, sorry, I wow, couldn't get no it. I couldn't get a. No, well, I didn't Just even know what it was. You did all ten digits yeah, every yeah. time. Yeah, I try to remember the. Man, yeah, I can't remember impressive. my own name, but I can remember people's phone numbers. So I would rather have a car because I can drive a car and I can't operate a fancy phone. What kind of car do you have? Oh, uh, Subaru. Nice. Just Subaru, non-fancy Impreza. Yeah. Would you rather have an elf or no elf? Uh, yeah, it would be great to have an elf. Would you rather have a Christmas tree or no Christmas tree? Yeah, definitely a Christmas tree. Would you rather have no Christmas or love Christmas? I would rather love Christmas. And that's from Elsie. Fun. Elsie, thanks, Elsie. Would no, you rather climb Christmas. a tree that's hanging off a cliff 5,000 feet down or eat a plate of your least favorite food for dessert for the rest of your life? Ah, wow. Yeah, that's a tough one. Good one. Crazy tough question. One. I think, sponsored uh, by Donut Crazy, which yeah. is on Farmington Avenue. You yeah. ever go there? Oh, great stuff. Great Irene, stuff. episode 10. She was a podcast guest. Oh, yeah. Check okay, out. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I think I would rather eat rotten food because I don't think I said that too. Yeah, I don't like heights he that goes, quite that high. But it's your least favorite food forever. I go, well, I don't want to hang over a <laughs> yeah. cliff and die. Oh, yeah, no, that would scare me um, too much. And Marnie? Marnie? Yes. Uh, Kaylin McBee. She looked up Kaylin McBee, Dave, to, to get a massage. First thing came up was Feeney Talks with Kaylin McBee yeah. on the Googles. Yeah. That was episode 20-ish. 20 yeah. 20 yeah. how, do, how do, does one, especially one technical moron, find out how to get on Friends of Feeney uh, uh, yeah, so, podcasts? How do yeah. you do that? So Feeney Talks with Friends. Right. Just go to the top bar, the web bar, put it in Feeney Talks with Friends. It should pop up. Okay. On a All computer right. or a phone? Yeah. Which one are you trying to look it up on? Probably a computer. Okay. <laughs> so you just right on top. And okay. then subscribe. We need those subscribers. We have 61 subscribers, Dave. We're getting well, there. We're until, trying to get to 100. Well, I... We had 18 at episode 22. I know, but don't you think after today we'll have the like subscribers a thousand? are going through the roof thousand? now. Here's a new subscriber. Yep. How you doing? Are you open? No. This is Cody. Oh, Welcome to... <laughs> another... We're open on Wednesdays. 
second guy coming. That's awesome. You want to be a guest on the podcast? Yeah, I don't think he does. <laughs> so Feeney Talks with Friends. This is episode 33. You're like 33, so Larry Bird wore 33. Are yeah. you the Larry Bird of Christmas trees? I am, absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love the outfit, and I just love having us here. Cody does the coffee. Will does the bear. We're on uh, 141 Shield Street. What's the tallest tree? What's your, what was your tallest tree ever at Mark's? Um, I would say many years ago, 20 years ago perhaps, we had a 17 foot tall tree and it went to a home in Glastonbury, I still remember that, and it took five guys to put it on the fella's roof, five, <laughs> five to Holy put cow. it on. Yeah, it was huge, yeah, yeah. What was your favorite present? My favorite present, wow, we, uh, Marty one year got me a, a puppy, oh. a Springer Spaniel, first one. Yeah, very cool. many years ago. We've, What's the name? We're on our third Springer Spaniel Always now because this Spaniels? was many years. Yeah. No, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, what makes yeah. you like the Springer Spaniel? Uh, they're just fun. They're a little crazy, but they're fun. Uh, Would you rather be a Santa or a reindeer? Uh, definitely rather be a Santa. Yeah, that's from Christian, my buddy Christian. Abdil says, would you rather have 100,000 Christmas trees or 1,000 kids? Whoa. <laughs> now, that's a cool question. Yeah. I, I got to say, I think 100,000 Christmas trees would be, yeah, a little, little perhaps easier maintenance. Would you rather have 100,000 hot dogs or 100,000 papers? Whoa. I would rather have 100,000 hot dogs if I could give them to people that would enjoy them. Yeah. yeah. How do trees get on the internet? Um, people, I guess, take pictures or write articles about them or whatever. And Wait yeah. for it. Yes. They log on. Oh, 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 no. That's from Ann. This one yeah. was great. Ann, this was hilarious. Very good, Ann. Ann, very Ann, nice. right? Yeah, we, we, they log on. Yes. Get it? That's very Get good. It? We we have we have jokes like that too that we tell like we tell the you know people that we pine for your business and <laughs> come on in and we'll spruce up your life and you know oh, don't forget the you know there was one that I'm forgetting about the fur what for the fur of it or, or something like that but That's anyway yeah some silly stuff. What do you like about Christmas? I like about Christmas primarily that our family gets together and it's just still you know as old as you might get you still have hopefully fun memories from days gone by and Christmases gone by. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's a family it. get together, yep. So Ann, great joke, Ann, that was great. Yes, it was, yeah. Matilda, like would you rather be a tree or be allergic to trees? Whoa, that's a good one too, yeah. I'd, I think I'd rather be a tree than be allergic. Yeah, what's yeah. your favorite tree? Uh, yeah, it's a balsam for Christmas tree with a nice, nice fragrance because they do have beautiful uh, smell to them. Okay. Yeah. Balsam fir. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. $65 right over there at 1030 New Britain Ave. Balsam fir. It's his favorite. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite holiday? Oh, Christmas for Hello. sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's from Matilda. Would you rather build a snowman or an igloo? Uh, I'd love to build an igloo. I think that would be a lot of fun. Do you know and the song? Do you want to build a snowman? Yeah. I yeah. want to build a snowman. Oh, all right, Mark, come on. Do you want it? <laughs> da, 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 so was it snowman or igloo? Uh, yeah, yeah. no, it was an igloo. Igloo. I'd rather do it. Yeah. Would you rather live in a house made of snow or a house made of ice? Uh, I think in a house made of ice. I would love to go to some of the countries that have the assorted igloos and hotels that yeah. you can stay in and stuff. I Just, really want ice castles. Yeah, I really yeah. want to do that. That there's, sounds fun. There's uh, the nearest place, I believe, is in Quebec City or somewhere in Quebec that they have a whole ice village and, and rooms. You can go and stay in them overnight, sleep on a bed of ice. And, yeah, uh, I want to do that. Yeah. Don't you Wouldn't wear a big fur cool? coat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And then when you go through Maine to get to Nova Scotia, what town through Maine? Yeah, you, you can cross it two places. One is Holton, Maine, which is straight up 95, and that's all highway, and it's, it's a very easy trip to Nova Scotia. You go up, believe it or not, I think from where we go from here to the place we go to Nova Scotia, 
there's literally about five turns because once you get on 95, you just go for miles and miles. The other place you can go is you can cut across Maine to the East Coast and cross at a place called uh, um, Calais, Maine, or Calais, C-A-L-A-I-S. We usually go to the highway just because it's easier. And how is the passport situation and the security? Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> it's much different now. Um, we were not allowed because of COVID to go up uh, two summers ago. We did go up this summer, and it, you know, it's, uh, you just have to have more paperwork uh, to go through at this point in time. And, and COVID testing, you have to do that. But generally, it's pretty easy when you know, we used to go up, and hopefully down the road, it'll be, be pretty easy. What would you illegally take back from Canada into the United States? Anything? Or, uh, or bring to Canada? Uh, you want to say that on the record? Uh, yeah, that sure. Go? What do we take? Yeah, um, we might take back a little more uh, beer than Beverages? we're supposed to take back. Yes. Okay. Yes. What's the but, beer of choice up there? Well, the beer of choice up there definitely is one from Nova Scotia called Keith's Beer. Keith's. Um, I'm not sure it's an IPA, but it's not the traditional, or it's not, it is the traditional IPA. It's not the hoppy IPAs, which I like a lot down here. Uh, it's more like a lager. And Al Alexander Keith's, which is still located in Halifax, Nova Scotia, is the oldest brewery, a bit of trivia, oldest brewery in North America. Um, uh, Yingling is the oldest brewery in the United States, yep. but Keith started about three years before. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that's it's, in Pennsylvania. So, I know that. Yeah, so it brings them back from Nova Scotia every year, and you're allowed so much. But do you have any in the fridge right now? Bit. Yeah. Can I try it? Yeah, absolutely. Can I have one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. Uh, yeah, you heard him, right? All yeah. Right, we're drinking. Uh, I'm coming give, over later. When the sense okay. we'll go over here. Yeah, and yeah, here. okay. Keith's. Keith's, yeah. Halifax, which reminds me, I taught at I worked at the Boys and Girls Club. And a student went over. He plays for the professional team in Halifax. Oh, yeah. His name's yeah. Tootie Zimmerman. He runs a basketball camp in Waterbury, my hometown. Yeah, yeah. Waterbury. Had a shout-out Waterbury every episode. And we, we sponsor kids. So Tootie, Halifax. So we made a Halifax yeah, connection. Yeah. Which led to Waterbury, which is, needs is to be he, mentioned every podcast. Is so. he still playing? And he's uh, still playing in Halifax. So I believe Have you been there? You ever been to the games? Or know the stadium? Years ago. Went to maybe one game. I have a, the friend that used to, that I mentioned used to come down, or he and a buddy of his go to many of the moose, they're mooseheads, that's yes, their name, yes, mooseheads, yes. they play in the Scotia Center, okay. which is that, like, it's in downtown Halifax, holds about 10,000 people or yeah, something. Yeah, it's my yeah. guy, he plays there, he, no, I think kidding, he's the cool. three-point, uh, he holds the most three-pointers for a Halifax team, Oh, is that right? yeah, yeah, really cool, Yeah. and I remember him as a kid, when he was 10, he ran in the, in the in the league that I ran as the physical director of the gym. Yeah. And we stayed in contact. And now nice. he runs a basketball camp, which Friends of Feeney would sponsor a student or a camper that needed some assistance. Yeah, and it great. It's great to have that connection. Yes. Would you rather have a big Christmas tree or a small Christmas tree? Uh, well, truth be told, we usually get kind of, I would say, a medium Christmas tree. Um, used to get it a little taller. And perhaps as we age, it's going to go like we are, yeah. go down a little bit in size. But uh, right now, we got about a seven-foot tree, and that's okay. pretty pretty good size. A lot of igloo. Would you rather live in an igloo or an ice house? Yeah. Uh, I told him who I was interviewing so that you could see there's a yeah. theme here. Yeah, sure. And it is, by the way, kind of funny that people used to. I don't know if they still do because they don't know much about Nova Scotia. They know it's in Canada. But they'll come up there expecting in the summertime to see igloos. There's no igloos in the wintertime, but they, they don't know what it's all about. All they know or they think is it's, it's cold up there. It's not that <laughs> much colder than it is down here. Uh, all right. Yeah. Good to know. This is what kind of Christmas tree do you like? Yeah. But this yeah. is multiple choice. Yes. A, slimy. B, wet. C, sticky. D, fresh. Uh, I think the fresh one would fresh. be. And this best. is Gus. Yeah. And Gus, Gus actually lives near Russ. So Gus and Russ, oh, yeah. they Gus know and each Russ. other. The yeah. Gus and Russ connection. And Gus says, hi, Russ. And they have another neighbor named Fuss. Right? Fuss, yep. yeah. And they get on the bus. Do they? Really? <laughs> get on the bus, Gus. <laughs> yeah. You don't got to discuss much. Who sings it? Paul Simon. My man, Mark. Yeah. Do you like trees? Uh, yes, I do like trees a would lot. Would you rather yeah. be a tree or a trunk? Yeah, yeah, I think the tree would be better. Would you rather be a leaf for two days or a holiday? A leaf for two days, yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, ha, I'm sorry. Put him. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'd rather be a holiday. What do you call? What do you call a tree that has sticks? What? A boneless tree. Oh, okay. All right, all right. All right. boneless. Yeah. How do? Oh, this is a good one. How do trees give us oxygen? Yeah, the way, the way they grow, they just uh, they emit oxygen through their uh, through the trunk and then out pours out through the uh, the branches and through the needles and it gets into the air and it's very good for the environment. Yeah. And by the way, in terms of being good for the environment, people years ago, actually about five, six years ago, there was a teacher who meant very well. Um, she was down in the Haddam area, I believe, and she was telling her students that perhaps you should not buy a real tree because you were killing the tree and it was good for the environment. And um, the fact of the matter is that while trees grow, they offer an awful lot from you know oxygen to, 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 and also offer a home for wildlife, et cetera. And for every tree that's cut on a farm, two trees are planted. So the Connecticut Christmas Tree Association, uh, which is a terrific association, they went down and talked to the teacher and explained these things to her. And uh, the teacher started you know, changing her point of view in a very nice way. Everything was done quite nicely, but she understood because it is kind of a myth and not good for the industry that, that it, it hurts to you know, cut down a tree. They're grown to be Christmas trees and they provide a lot to the environment, so keep doing yeah. them. Yeah, keep growing. Yeah. And if you want a tree, 1030 New Britain Ave, the beautiful lot. We should get that lot doing something when it's not Christmas trees. What is it? Yeah, I know. Should I don't. I start. Yeah, I'm not sure what else they could they could do down there. We, yeah, yeah. I don't. This know. This is a good one. That was Jay Lee. Jay Lee had us yeah. with the um, trees. Uh, ask about oxygen. Great question. And Gus. And now this is the last one. Daniela, would you rather live with a talking tree or a tree that follows you around everywhere you go? Wow. That's, yeah. That's a good one, Daniela. I, that's a great one. Yeah, I think I would like to live with a talking tree because I just think it would be cool. They, actually, up in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, they have a probably about a 30-foot tree in a, a, not a real tree, in a mall, and it's got a face in the middle, and it talks to people as they're going by, and it, uh, kids love it. Uh, some people are kind of spooked by it, but <laughs> it's, I think it's kind of cool. Woody the talking tree. Yeah. Can't beat it. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Dave, did we get our picture? Did you do the picture? Yeah, did I, you get I, did, I did it uh, about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it was an hour ago. So we're hour. So we tried to go 40 minutes with Feeney. You yeah. we went 50 minutes with Feeney. You went a whole hour. What are we? We're, we're close to 90 minutes. 90? Yeah. What? Jeez, I Jeez. could talk to you all day. Uh, well, there was so much fun. Any closing yeah. remarks? No, marks? I just like to. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's see what good. Marks for yeah, the marks. Yeah, yeah. Remarks from marks. Uh, no, just thank you for having me. It was a load of fun. And, Man. Uh, yeah, and I think, uh, and the best thing is not only meeting a very nice gentleman and a lovely woman. I'm still, by the way, not sure what she saw in you, but that's okay. <laughs> o only kidding. Hey. But, <laughs> yeah. but to find out what you do because yeah. I did not know much about Friends of Feeney, so it's great. So I'd like to see what help that yeah. I can be Let's to you. Let's be, uh, continue this yeah. collaboration yeah. and uh, partnership and relationship. Yeah. I would love to, to work with you yeah. and uh, let's see where it goes. And uh, my, people ask that all the time of my wife. You're married yeah. to him? <laughs> like, uh, you know, Monday yeah. through Friday Feeney or weekend Feeney, yeah. there's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, She's lucky. Yeah, right? she's, she's a wonderful, great. wonderful yeah. person. I love her yeah, so much. Yeah, terrific. Uh, you know, like yesterday's my birthday. I'm like, you know what? Every day's my birthday. Every day's Father's Day. Yeah. With you, so. That's but, nice. Um, yeah. It was great chatting with you. You too. Mark, yep. you're an amazing person. You have a wonderful story. You have so many stories that we shared today. That was hilarious. I can't wait to go back and watch this podcast. Please like and share the podcast. Please subscribe. Uh, it's Feeney Talk with Friends. We talk with wonderful people that are doing great things in the community. Yeah. And, you know, doing wonderful things for 40 years in the community is quite, quite a feat and very special, yeah. don't you think? Thank you. I do think, think so, but thank you for what you're doing. You're doing some real special stuff. Yeah, and we got to hang out last night at the, at the uh, toy drive. Yeah. I'm hoping Dave will scan with the camera to see our collection and our booth. Uh, I want to shout out Russ Trent, wonderful person down there. Steve Ruff. 
Dave Volpe, Chris Jackson, Nick Ruff, my guy Nick Ruff donated. Just a wonderful bunch of uh, people. And then again, all the high school kids from West Hartford and Newington. You do great things over there. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dave, from Direct Line Media. Thank you, Cody and Will from Weeha Roasting and Brewing. Thank you, Miriam, for allowing this chat. Thank you for sitting there. <laughs> Phone a friend, Miriam. Nova Marnie. Scotia. Or, Marnie. A, you, Marnie. Marnie. Yeah. You're a blue noser. Yeah. Blue noser. Cody, we're going to get you in next time, Cody. Yeah. We'll I shout out the flag. The flag is in. Yeah. Um, this was Feeney Talks with Friends, episode 33, Mark's uh, ChristmasTrees.com, down over there in New Britain Ave. And uh, thanks again, everybody. And don't forget, be a good friend. Great. Thank you.